the third Sunday of Lent. The first reading of the liturgy for this weekend is a long list of do's and don'ts. And it is tempting to use your time giving yourself a report card and what did you do and what did you don't and give yourself a grade and then what are you going to do with the mistakes the undos very interesting in uh, terms of today's gospel um, last sunday we had the apostles having their little liturgy up on the mountain and this intimate encounter with Jesus and themselves and then they wanted to stay there and Jesus said no after intimacy like this we have to go and share it and that was the theme of last week's liturgy the gospel today is very interesting in this that it's in the second chapter of John's gospel and the first 12 verses or so is the changing of water into wine. And it's the first sign in John's book of signs, the first 12 chapters of John's gospel is called the book of signs. And he does these things, not many miracles, not many healings, but enough to be seen in John's gospel. Jesus says, come and see. So the first sign they see is changing water into wine at a wedding feast. But it's really about how Jesus has come to change things, people, and change the relationship that God has with us and we have with God. So that's, that's what John's gospel is about, change. So the second part of that chapter uh, usually in the synoptics of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the mm, visit of Jesus to the temple and driving out the money changers and all, that happens later, heightening the tension between the Jewish leaders and Jesus. In John's gospel, it happens very early. It's almost another prologue, you know. It's, it's an, this, is, this is happening at the beginning because it's going to be happening everywhere. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's Passover, near Passover, so Jesus goes to the temple, the very holy place. And he goes in and he finds that according to Jewish tradition, law, and you can read it very clearly, by the way, explicitly and detailed in the first chapter of Leviticus, especially verse nine, and we'll get to that. So they are there, the um, money changers and those providing oxen and sheep and doves, they're doing a, a duty for the people who come to square things with God. So they're going to do something, a sacrifice, according to the law, and then they are okay. They, they did the religious thing by sacrificing something, probably very expensive, and they go up once a year and do the sacrifice um, of atonement, of reconciliation. They do it to make God benevolent. And in verse nine of chapter one of Leviticus, and I highly recommend it, you won't believe it, but it says very detailed, do this, wash this, um, lay the entrails this way, and everything is perfect, then sacrifice it. And the fragrance of the sacrifice will appease God. God will be pleased and appeased by the fragrance of the sacrifice. Now, the change. Jesus is, in John's Gospel, 
Jesus is changing the temple from this 46 year building, 46 years to build, changing it in, he is now the holy place. He is now the temple. Destroy this temple and three days will be raised up. So he's saying, I am the holy place. I am the sacrifice. I am how God renders you acceptable to God. God is the sacrificer. So you sellers and you uh, sacrificers, that's going to change. This building, and by the time John's gospel is written, the temple in Jerusalem has been torn down by the Romans. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. I will be the new temple. I will be the sacrifice. I will be the atonement. You are not the atoners. You are not the sacrificers, but you are the receivers of the atonement that I render through my life, death, and resurrection. So that's the theology, that Jesus is the redeemer, the reconciler. He is the sacrifice by which we are rendered pleasing to God. Or we are aware that God has always been for us. God has always been the loving creator of us. And now the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus is the intensification of that creative love. Now, what is this for us? What's the gospel for us? There are some interesting things that Jesus knew the thoughts of human beings and didn't trust them and all this stuff. But basically, I think we can. You have to decide whether this is you or not. But many people come to church as a marketplace, believe it or not. And they come with their uh, goods and bads. And they, they do a marketing with God, hoping that God will be benevolent. And maybe God, with all my nice sounding prayers and songs, God will like that. And God will say, oh, that's, that's good. You had a good thought, a good feeling. Good, I will reconcile you now. Or I will reconcile you to yourself. So it's a, it's a, it's a bargaining place. It's a marketing place. Not unlike the buyers and sellers in the temple of John too. that we bargain with Jesus. We make good intentions, or we, we do Lenten penance. Now God is very pleased with me. God is always pleased with us. God is pleased with God, and we are in Christ. That's our holiness, that we are in the temple of Jesus, the new temple, the eternal temple. We are in him, and he has reconciled us to God in his life and death and resurrection. So we go to the Eucharist, not as a way of bargaining. If I do this, then you got to do this, God. Or I have done my Lenten penances and now you have to forgive me. No, God has to forgive us because that's who God is, not because of who we are. It's not what we do. We are the receivers. And we are in the new temple. And he is our sacrifice. But we can do bargaining. And that's what I'd maybe like us to give up. That we come to the Eucharist as sacred people in Christ. That which we would like if we go to church and do the right things, then we get sanctified. No, we come because we were baptized, we are in Christ, we are in the new temple. 
And what we're doing is celebrating who we are in God's eyes. And we celebrate what God has done for us. And then we don't go out because we have been made holy. We went because we were holy and we remembered it. We were reunited with ourselves, our identity. And then we go in the temple then. We are part of the temple. We are part of the experience of holiness in this world. If we remember it, if we are blessed at the Eucharist, not just remember it, but remember who he says we are. You are my temple. You are in me. You are my body. Live that way. Not as a bargaining chip. Now you've done the good things, so God has to love you. No, we want to do the good things because God wants us to know who we are. That's what's celebrated at the Eucharist. That's what we're going to celebrate these days of Lent. That's what we are going to re-remember Good Friday and as we welcome new people into the temple, the baptism at the Easter Vigil and celebrate his resurrection in us at Easter. That's where we're going these days of Holy Lent. Go peacefully.